still drowsy, she's now carefully weighed. Her photograph is taken, and it'll be entered into the database. And then it's back to the rest of the troop, up on the rock. She's no worse for wear, and hopefully she'll provide the researchers with some useful information. They'll look for markers in her DNA that might link her to a specific troop of macaques in North Africa. So is the rock the last home of a vanished European, or the only home of an African interloper? Soon, these mysterious monkeys might give up their secret. Our search for aliens now takes us to the home of evolution itself, the islands of the Galapagos. Actually, every animal here is an alien of sorts. When these islands erupted from the sea, they were barren and lifeless. All the animal life here either swam, flew, or drifted across over the past nine million years. The closest mainland, South America, is 800 kilometers to the east. But reptiles can withstand long periods without food and water and are thought to have been among the first aliens to arrive. There are two types of iguana living on the islands. This is a marine iguana, and as its name suggests, it lives by the sea. Living inland on several of the islands is the second type, the land iguana. The two types, marine and land, are thought to have evolved from a common ancestor that somehow floated across from continental South America. The pressure to find food drove some of these newly arrived iguanas into the water. They evolved a flattened tail to help them swim and learned to feed on the green algae which grows on the rocks. Their claws became long and sharp to prevent them being swept away in the strong currents. They also developed a blunt snout so they could tear off the algae more easily. While some took to the water, others chose to stay on land, eating leaves and flowers. The distinction between the two was well documented, until a third type of iguana was recently discovered on a tiny island called South Plaza. These imposters, with their white stripy necks, look neither like land nor marine iguanas. So what are they? The answer came from the work of Howard Schnell, here checking his breeding pens at the Charles Darwin Research Station. Attacked by alien creatures, that's cats and dogs, brought to the islands by sailors and settlers, the iguanas have died out in much of the archipelago. And so Howard now breeds land iguanas with a view to repopulating the islands where they're extinct. This healthy specimen might one day start a colony where there haven't been any iguanas for generations. <laughs> 